Hello everyone. The term paradigm shift was introduced to us by Thomas Kuhn, an American philosopher, in his book, The Structure of Scientific Revolutions. In this book, Kuhn showed, shows how almost every major breakthrough is a break from tradition or old, old ways of thinking. So, for example, for many years, people believed that the Earth was the center of the universe. Uh, which was started by the great Egyptian astronomer Claudius Ptolemy. But as, as we all know, Copernicus um, uh, in the 1500s thought otherwise and formulated a different theory by placing the sun at the center. It was a major paradigm shift that was met with great deal of resistance, primarily from the Catholic Church, and so many were persecuted. Most notably was Galileo Galilei, who was forced to recant his theory uh, that the earth revolves around the sun under threat of torture. You know, it was only in 1992 under Pope John Paul II that the Vatican issued an apology. So to further explain what paradigm shift is, uh, I will explain to you the difference between perception and reality. The best explanation i have for you is a story you know by stephen covey from his book the seven habits of highly effective people so this is the book okay so uh, i'll i'll read a story because it, it's a beautiful story and if you happen to have this book it's in page 30. okay so if i may read um <clears throat> one sunday morning on a subway in new york uh, people were sitting quietly, some reading newspapers, some lost, lost in thought, some resting with their eyes closed. It was a calm, peaceful scene. Then suddenly, a man and his children entered the subway car. The children were so loud and rambunctious that inst instantly the whole climate changed. The man sat down next to me and closed his eyes apparently oblivious to the situation. The children were yelling back and forth, throwing things, even grabbing people's papers. It was very disturbing. And yet, the man sitting next to me did nothing. It was difficult not to feel irritated. I could not believe that he could be so insensitive as to let his children run, run wild like that and do nothing about it taking no resp responsibility at all. It was easy to see that everyone else on the subway felt irritated too. So finally, with what I felt was unusual patience and restraint, I turned to him and said, Sir, your children are really disturbing a lot of people. I wonder if you couldn't control them a little more. The man lifted his gaze as if to come to a consciousness of the situation for the first time and said softly, Oh, you're right. I guess I should do something about it. We just came from the hospital where their mother died about an hour ago. I don't even, I don't know what to think. And I guess they don't know how to handle it either. So that's the story. Uh, you know, so... The perception of Stephen Covey was that the man was irresponsible, was insensitive to the situation. But the reality is, you know, the man, the man just lost his wife and the mother of his kids. So instantly, Stephen Covey had a paradigm shift. And he, and he said further in the book, you know, suddenly I saw things differently. And because I saw differently, I thought differently, I felt differently, I behaved differently. My irritation vanished. I didn't have to worry about controlling my attitude or my behavior. My heart was filled with the man's pain. Feelings of sympathy and compassion flowed freely. Your wife just died? Oh, I'm so sorry. Can you tell me about it? What can I do to help? Everything changed in an instant. So that is the difference between perception and reality.
friends, you know, our new president took oath last June 30 together with several government officials. Marami sa atin hanggang ngayon hindi pa rin maka-move on. You probably right that uh, you know uh, former uh, VP Lenny Robredo and other candidates uh, other candidate was more qualified to be the president. Si Robin Padilla right now is receiving a lot of backlashes uh, in social media. Uh, so many are saying na sayang si chill joke no na lang sana. You know, um, the guy is not qualified and so on and so forth. Um, you know what? Uh, you may be right with your assumptions and perception. But the reality is, Bong Bong Marcos is our president, not Lenny Robredo. Robin is the one sitting on our, on the Senate, not Shell Jokno. For those who cannot accept the reality, they are sticking to their perception. And this is where the problem lies. You know, by sticking to your perception, you want to be proven right. So you are, what you are doing is actually, you're waiting for the person to make mistakes. Yung iba maging wala, pasaway lang. You know, they, they will not pay taxes, you know, disrupt government projects, you know, not follow rules uh, just to make the projects fail. Some, probably you're just, some are just hoping for the person to fail miserably so that one day you can say, I told you so, you know. Uh, wishing for our president to fail is also wishing for our country to fail. So the question is, do you really want our country to fail just so to feed your ego? You know, this is pure pride, friends. You know, si Robin, for example, you know, first time to attend the Senate hearing or was it a board meet or whatever, I mean, nag, nag comment lang na nabibilisan siya o ang dami ng negative comments sa social media. And ang dami na lang biglang na, na daming abogado sa atin. No. Friends, please, let's be fair, you know. Let's be fair to the guy. Give the guy some room to learn and grow. Kahit, kahit sino man, you know. If you're new to your job, of course, anyone needs adjustment. Anyone needs time to learn and learn the ropes you know kahit sino kahit, kahit sino ka pa there's nothing cool about spreading animosity and hatred it is so lame to be pointing out the mistakes of Robin Padilla and other newbie government officials it is such a waste of time reading and reacting to these messages those who haven't sinned can cast the first stone <laughs> yan ang masabi ko so what's the reality? The reality is our country needs our help. Ang dami nating problema. But the problems we have are not only for our government to solve. That is another reality. Whether you voted for Bong Bong or not, you know what is the cooler thing to do? The cooler thing to do is to support our government anyway. So it will succeed. We have to do our part. Why? Because this is our country. We want it to be a place pleasant enough for our families and future generations to live and enjoy. Do not think that I am too small to affect change. You are not too small. Start by doing job start by doing doing your job well. If you are a student, study well. You know, if you can create some jobs, help your con help your company, your profession, your industry to flourish. Pay the right taxes. Be law abiding. Do not be a part of hate campaigns. Do not ask what your country can do for you. Instead, ask what you can do for your country. So if you drill down, my friend. In, in anything, you know, if you drill down to the root cause why people misbehave, spread hate messages, or simply being indifferent, it is all because they do not want to shift their paradigm. 
U.S. President Harry Truman once said, "It is amazing what you can you can accomplish if you do not care who gets the credit." Friend, it doesn't really matter who is right or wrong, and it is okay to be wrong. Uh, I made a lot of mistakes in my life, and I have scars to prove it. And I'm sure you did too. What is important is that you admit that you're wrong, learn from it, adjust, and move on. Where I am in life is a combination of the right and wrong decisions I made, and I wouldn't change the wrong des- the wrong ones I made because, quite honestly, those are the ones that made me stronger. So. That's all for this episode and thank you for watching.